Hi, I'm Jennifer Boyd, and this is my Positive Psychology Reflection Video 3. So, um, the first question is, what did I learn that made me start seeing or viewing a topic differently? And so, we'll start with Chapter 8. It was about seeing our future through self-efficacy, optimism, and hope. I think something I especially learned was about past, present, and future orientations. I am a future-oriented person for sure, but one thing I learned is the danger of missing out on living in the moment and enjoying the here and now if you're always looking ahead. There's a song that comes to mind about um, don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Um, this is my mindset. but what about the roses? What about the savoring? Um, as a Christian, we're encouraged to linger in the presence of God, but this is probably hard for me. I like, I feel like I'm in a perpetual race and never reaching the finish line. So even this degree, I finished in 11 days, but then I'm just right on to the next race. There's always a new goal and the next thing leads to the next thing, which leads to the next thing, just in perpetuity. It just seems like it goes forever. So um, as far as self-efficacy, optimism, and hope, I was really raised on that um, Waddy Piper book, The Little Engine That Could. So I think these things come pretty naturally for me, but my aha moment was when I read parental optimism trickles down to the kids. Um, that's really good to know since my husband and I are helping to raise our two grandkids. I also found it interesting and a little disheartening, honestly, that optimists have lower immunity during high levels of stress. I was like, what? I'm an optimist though. I should have good immunity, right? No. And this was me last school year because I, um, it was my first year teaching and we had just gotten the grand boys December 9th and I'm finishing up this degree. So in the spring semester, I started January with pneumonia and then I got COVID and then I got mono and then I got the flu and <laughs> I thought, I'm just done, stick a fork in me, because that's like so ridiculous. It was just crazy. Um, and then um, I have so many Asian friends and family. I'm always interested to learn more about their culture. So I thought it was really interesting that they are more pessimistic in general, but they have better problem solving skills. Um, also, my husband calls himself an optimistic realist or a realistic optimist, one of those, but I call him a pessimist and he probably calls me an optimist, but the book said men are actually more optimistic in general, um, which I just thought was interesting, but we're kind of opposite in our roles sometimes, so that sort of makes sense too. Um, finally, low optimism equaled low working memory. I thought that was um, interesting because I feel like my memory's not so good. Maybe going to school has helped a little, but if high opt optimism equals high working memory, then um, there's just one more reason to keep up our hopes, you know, to have high hopes, which is another song. So, um, and the supplemental materials for chapter eight, I really like the videos about Jose's story and A is for average and hope is the most powerful force in the world. But I took the most notes on the video, why are so many of our teachers in school so successful? Probably because I am a teacher. So um, the two main takeaways I, I put were, I need to understand my impact and I need to show my students what success looks like. So this is this is what success looks like. Now let's get there, you know, together. So um, chapter nine, okay. Chapter nine was about courage and wisdom. And I really loved the references to the Serenity Prayer and um, the Wizard of Oz. 
I learned about the different kinds of courage in particular, the vital courage when we're sick or um, going through some kind of serious illness, physical courage, um, like firefighters, police, military. My husband's a retired police officer, so I always appreciate that. And then moral courage is the pursuit of justice or the common good. And then civil courage was uh, righteous indignation. So um, in the supplemental materials, I really like the cultivating wisdom. Uh, uh, specifically, breathing is one way that we can control affect. And um, the idea of feeling is believing is called affective realism and it can play tricks on our minds. So um, I really liked the video on ancient wisdom when she said, you all have watches, but you have no time. <laughs> and uh, faster is not always better. And I dress for the divine. Those were, um, you know, things that really stood out. And then chapter 10 was about mindfulness, flow, and spirituality. And I learned a new definition for mindfulness that started with an openness to novelty and uh, just a different way of thinking about mindfulness than I had before. I learned a lot about flow, which really interests me. Um, as a musician, I'm a music teacher and I teach piano. And so um, I think about, when I think about flow for myself, I think about sitting down playing the piano. I just could sit, if I did not have other responsibilities, I, I could just sit and play the piano all day, every day. <laughs> so, um, but I know I can't, but that is definitely my flow thought when I think of um, how I achieve flow. So, um, but I found the many sources on spirituality seemed really kind of lacking in the Judeo-Christian views of my own faith. So, um, anyway, things I did like were mostly in the supplemental material, the video, Losing Yourself in Flow State. Um, she had several things that were so great. She said, flow is a positive feedback loop and unity gives things meaning and purpose. And her flow strategy was sharing so that you can take your best self anywhere. I, I thought it was interesting that she said you can achieve flow, not just doing your favorite things, but like doing your least favorite things, your most scary things. You could still find flow in doing that because you have to think about what's happening inside, you know, what, ask yourself the questions, where, what, and why. And so you can take um, your why into say the boardroom or into a public speaking engagement or wherever you know that you're having to go that's not your favorite thing um but still find flow still achieve flow so um anyway chapter 11 okay was about empathy and egotism and i learned about different kinds of altruism care-based altruism was motivated by empathy Kin-based altruism was for family. Uh, Reciprocity-based altruism was expecting something in return. And then parochial-based was, um, or altruism was for in-group over out-group. And uh, I think care-based is probably the best one, in, at least for me. And then, um, the, in the supplemental material, I really loved the video about creating a culture of selflessness. It was so good. I mean, everything in it was so on point. It was, I, I seriously, I mean, I, I highly recommend that video to everybody. It was so good. Um, but he talked about putting others ahead of yourself. And in order to be first, you have to be last which that's actually in the Bible too. Um, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, take others with you. And then it starts with leadership. So treat everyone the same and lead and assists by passing it on. 
pass on your knowledge, pass on your resources, pass on your wealth, and then pick other people up, poor, homeless, at risk, youth. And I, I think, I mean, for me, it's just whoever you find in need um, in your circle of influence, whoever that may be. And then I also really like the experiment in gratitude. And I was really thrilled to finally hear one person use the name of Jesus Christ and give him first place when expressing gratitude. So good for him. Um, chapter 12 was about attachment, love, relationships, and forgiveness. And I learned that there were four different definitions in the text for forgiveness. So I think it all depends on who you ask. <laughs> and then in the supplemental material, I watched the video on unconditional love. And I thought it was interesting that she said we all want to be loved exclusively. And then also the busier we are, the less caring we become so we can disconnect. And I'm so busy right now. I can totally see that. Um... And then next, I watched the podcast, or listened to the podcast, I guess, on using attachment theory with Helen Dent. The um, That one was really great and had so many great points. I really can, I couldn't possibly list them all. They were so good. But I will just say, as someone who's been married for 36 years, against all the odds, everyone in a relationship should listen to this podcast even if you're um just in a friendship with someone um most helpful to me was her advice not to burden your loved ones make others lives easier not harder and uh, everything she said was just right on point it was so good um what did you learn that you want to try and integrate into your life or get better at um Meditation was some, something that came up on a couple of things, which for me is prayer. Um, the gratitude experiment, definitely want to try that, where you just, you know, write out about someone you're, you know, who is really instrumental in your life, really influential in your life, that you really appreciate, and then actually call them and tell them, you know. Um, I thought that was really great. And then um, the Helen Dent, podcast actually it wasn't her it was the girl interviewing her Vicky or somebody um said something about journaling and I, I know we've touched on that before in this class I think and you know I need to get back into that but I just I've been, been so busy getting my degree and then um the pick him up from the selflessness video I thought it was so good about if if somebody falls down pick them up help them up and that's also biblical. So, you know, just the idea of helping people when they're down. And then, is there something that you completely disagree with and why? Okay. <laughs> well, just there were so many biblical concepts presented, but really no reference to what the Bible has to say. We live in the Bible belt, so you would think there would have been a mention of Proverbs. And um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I think marriages rife with infidelity are not really healthy. So um, the video on unconditional love, I think she was talking about, you know, how they were both unfaithful, but it was okay. And I'm just like, yeah, no, not really. <laughs> I don't think that's okay. Um, I just don't think that's a healthy way to really um, have a marriage or a relationship. Um, there were several mentions of we are enough just as we are, you know, you're enough and your art is enough because you're enough and you're enough just like you are. And I just think, um, <laughs> it's kind of a big thing right now is that, you know, you're, you're good enough just like you are. But I think really there's no room for improvement or growth. Um, I just hope I never stop growing or being open to change or open to learn something because um, I always have room for improvement. I, I will always, I will never arrive until, you know, I die and go to heaven. And then, you know, hopefully at that point I can say, you know, okay, now I've arrived. But 
Until then, no, always learning, always growing, hopefully always open to change. Um, and then, okay, what did I learn at REIGS? And then did you discover anything new about yourself? Um, I just really want to listen to Helen Dent some more because I think her podcast made me aware or at least more aware of some interpersonal weaknesses I have like dumping on my husband when I get off of work every day. Um, I, I probably need to work on that and not doing that because she talked about not making your loved one's lives harder. Don't, you know, make their lives easier, make their lives easier. Don't make them harder. And, um, by burdening them, um, by oversharing. It's not that you don't share. It's just, you don't, you know, you shouldn't overshare just everything negative. And so, um, anyway, it was just very, very good, good interpersonal relationship skill stuff, a lot of good personality and, and care, you know, character trait stuff this um, time around. A lot of things I can relate to my faith and uh, what I already know from the Bible, but also that I will, you know, be able to dig into more even um, once I finish my degree and I have a little more time, but that's it. Thank you.